Hey up everybody, my name is Joshua Morrison, director of Johnny Mozza's Lessons and Confidence and today I want to talk to you a little bit about HD, high definition video and how it's not necessarily the be all and end all for all forms of uh, cinema, video, media, etc. So um, in, in the past when I was growing up we, we watched everything on a VHS and a VHS plays everything back in this really quite low quality, I think it's 240p or maybe 360p or something like that, it's not the super high mega HD right and uh, then you got DVD and I think DVD was 480p and then you got uh, Blu-rays which uh, I think started off as 720p and then graduate gradually became 1080p and 1080p is kind of the default that we have today if you're watching this video you're probably watching it on 1080p uh, unless you're on like mobile data or something you probably set it to a bit lower like I do I tend to set all YouTube videos to 144p if I'm watching it on mobile because like it's on a tiny screen anyway, I'm, I'm not really missing much in my opinion. I'm not missing, you know, seeing the little like blemishes here. I don't see the texture on this if it's set to 144p. This is just a grey strip and this is just a grey slab and I'm just an array of pixels. And that's okay because the reason that you're watching this isn't for the highest fidelity of the visuals to see all of this, to see every one of those little bricks in that thing behind me. You're not here to, to watch that, you're here to listen to the things that I'm trying to say and you don't need super high fidelity video to accomplish that. Where HD is useful is in something like a, a nature documentary for instance. You, you don't really want to be watching a nature documentary in 144p or 360p or something like that and when HD came around it was really beneficial for documentaries in general because with that you're trying to capture reality as it is and when you want to do that HD is really beneficial because it's the closest to what our eyes actually see. Our eyes apparently see in something like 8K, I um, can't remember exactly what the numbers are but we can see in that kind of quality so once we get to 8K when we've got 1080p as being the standard now, once we get to 8, 8K being the standard, there is no further we can really go uh, in terms of what our eyes can actually process. We're not going to be able to get anything much better than this. It's the same way our eyes see in something like 150-ish frames a second. Again, these numbers aren't correct. I'm not saying that these are the stats and these are the figures and this is exactly the way it is. But the point I'm making is that our perception of the world is... Uh, something that technology is quite rapidly catching up to and at some point in the next 20 years it's going to surpass what our own eyes and our ears uh, can actually perceive. Now what's going to happen when we reach that point? Um, I can't say for, exact, for exactly you know in any capacity but I do think that as HD has started to really take over and now 4K is kind of coming out, you notice how 4K has been around now for over 10 years and it hasn't taken nearly the same foothold in our media landscape as HD has. Why is that? Well, 4K for a start is an extremely large file size. Um, it's quite a hassle to edit with and it's a hassle to shoot because it fills up your SD cards quite quickly and uh, it's, it's generally a bit uh, cumbersome to actually work with and then to view as well. You need to have quite high internet if you wanna stream it or you need to have a 4K telly and you need to have 4K this and you need to have a you know, ultra HD uh, Blu-ray player and all this sort of stuff. And uh, you know, even if, we may, even if technology gets to the point where 4K is just as easy to use as HD is to us today, I don't think it's gonna take the same foothold in uh, the media landscape because with 4K, what can you see that HD can't show you? Well, you can see the texture on things a little bit cle more cleanly, right? And you can see the texture on people's faces a lot more cleanly. Now, what happens when you've got a, a Hollywood movie where you've got loads of actors who are all very, you know, image conscious and they've got, you know, blemishes. They might have a spot or a pimple or, or you know, some cracked skin or some signs of aging and wrinkles and stuff like that. When you can, right, zoom into their face you're seeing all their imperfections and they don't want you to see those imperfections. In fact, I, I, I imagine a lot of actors are very displeased with the idea of being shown in say 4K or 8K. And some probably don't even massively like HD, but they've kind of gotten over it and they're, now they're just like, okay, fine, it'll be in HD, but not 4K, yeah? <laughs> and then at some point they'll probably be okay with 4K, but not 8K. But once we get, again, once we get to 8K, that is what our human eyes can see. What are we gonna do after that point? Are we gonna 
do laser surgery on our eyes to make it so that we can see in 16K. Then what happens when we get to 16K for video? And that's the standard. Are we gonna, what are we gonna do? What, how high definition do we really need to go? Where 4K is useful is for if you want to sort of hone in on a specific thing. If you wanna zoom in post and you wanna work with the footage in post. Um, I don't have a 4K camera, but if, I, if it was a 4K camera, I could just sort of zoom in. I could go up to 200 scale. Uh, this, at the moment you're seeing, this is 100 scale. So 200 scale would be taking a 4K video and making it 2K, which 2K is basically 1080p. It's a tiny bit better than, two, than uh, 1080p. It's not exactly the same, but it's more or less the same. Um, and it's splitting hairs, really, at that point. And, uh, you know, when you get 8K, it can be quite useful because you can sort of digitally zoom into something that's really small and you don't lose any fidelity when you're presenting it in HD 1080p. So that is a real advantage of 4K, of 8K. And once we start getting to, you know, 16K cameras coming out or 32, 64K cameras far into the future, that's where it'll be useful because you'll be able to do like the Blade Runner zoom and enhance thing and you'll be able to properly actually get into like seeing someone's face and identify their face in like the reflection of a puddle of water on the ground and you'll be able to actually see them very clearly and make out who they are. And that would be kind of cool. And uh, that's, that's a decent thing to have, but I think when you're chasing these high definitions, it's getting to a point where we're, we're losing um, the, the, the point of having this you know, technology, because what's the point of having the technology if we've got no real use for it? Now, horror movies are something that, I'm not a massive horror guy, but whenever I've watched a horror movie, I've enjoyed myself, and I find that if you try and watch a horror movie in HD, it kind of loses its edge, because everything about horror is about, you know, the fear of the unknown in general. It's about not seeing stuff, rather than seeing stuff. So if you put, say, The Thing, or, or um, Halloween into, you know, 4K, you're kind of losing something because the graininess and, and the low fidelity of these uh, works is what makes them so uh, interesting and so fun to watch because you don't see everything. You don't know what's going on. You don't know like what's happening in that little corner. You can't see the monster through the dark because if you can, in that sort of high fidelity, you'll be able to make out that it's just a, a load of plastic tubing and uh, some prop design, which, you know, the prop masters don't really want super high fidelity uh, video either because then it shows off their props and visual effects artists don't want uh, 4K and 8K and all this stuff because it makes it much, much easier to actually tell the issues with the CGI. If you're seeing like a CGI thing in 480p, all the imperfections with the CGI kind of get masked by the artifact artifacting and the compression that comes with exporting that video in 480p. Now, we can keep doing this. We can keep uh, improving our quality and getting things higher and higher and higher um, in terms of their fidelity. But I don't think it's necessary. I don't think we need to be doing this. And I feel like at a certain point in the future, it's going to be a lot more acceptable to just release a film in 240p or 480p. And having a... Uh, definition to your film will become like having an aspect ratio to it. So in the past, your, your film was the aspect ratio that it was in, right? You didn't really choose an aspect ratio to it. If you were filming on 70 millimeter, that was the aspect ratio it was gonna be. If you were shooting on super 16 millimeter, that was the aspect ratio you would get out of it. Is it in 4K? Well, that's because of the limitations by the technology and because of the medium that you actually wanna put it on. You don't have an artistic uh, reason to be showing something in 16 by 9 or 18 by 9 or 2.35 or, or 4 by 3 or whatever. But now you can make those decisions. And I think in going forwards into the future, definition is going to join aspect ratio in being a uh, creative decision for people to take on. If you're making a horror movie, you'll be able to just say, and you can do it now actually, um, if you're making a horror movie, you can make it uh, in 360p or 480p and really try and hide the uh, imperfections in say the props or, or the actors and, and like get that sort of fear of the dark kind of uh, you know quality going to it and actually help use the definition to build the tension uh, because it's what you don't see that scares you not what you do see um, 
and then you could, if you're making a nature documentary, then yeah, 4K is brilliant for that sort of thing because you want to be able to make out that monkey in as like high fidelity as possible. You want to see every hair on that monkey's arm, you know, because you're there to observe and, you, and it's about what you do see in a nature documentary, which is completely the opposite of say a horror movie. If, you, if you're releasing a, a thriller movie, then it could depend on the nature of the thriller movie, you know, to, to have, it in HD or 720 or 4K or, or whatever, right? It could be kind of whatever you want it to be. Now, I don't know when this kind of uh, adoption of uh, video definition is really gonna take off. I think first what needs to happen is uh, we need to be more accepting of low quality uh, video. And we already kind of are with say JPEG uh, compression and you know, we, we upload a video that's a re-upload and re-upload, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You've got memes for instance, which are all extremely low resolution and that's kind of the, it feeds into the charm of them. And you've got um, these internet videos that are filmed on webcams and stuff like that, but you don't mind because it's about the content itself, not the quality of it. It's like, if you go to see the Mona Lisa, you're seeing the Mona Lisa from the other side of the room behind loads and loads of people behind a big pane of glass, but you still take away from the facts. Like, fucking hell, I just saw the Mona Lisa. Oh, that was amazing, I loved it, you know? Whereas if you, you know, and you didn't see it in the highest fidelity, but you can just go on Google Images, search the Mona Lisa, find the largest version of the image and then zoom right in. You can see all the cracks in the paint and you can see the little, uh, you know, details and, and, and all that. But you don't necessarily need to. It's not about the shading of the Mona Lisa's face. It's about the overall image and the, the context to why that image is so popular and, and the, the artistic expression behind it and all that sort of stuff. It's not about the detail of that exact thing, you know? Like, the interesting thing about this video, for instance, is me talking, not the texture on this, or the texture on this, or the texture over there, or the texture on my face, right? And uh, I'm not saying that this is like an interesting monologue, like, but it's, that's the thing that you're here for. That's the thing that you're, you're watching this for, you're not watching it for the high fidelity, but if this was a nature documentary, you would be watching it for the texture on this and the texture on this and the texture back there because you'd be trying to take it all in because you want to observe the world, which is the point of a documentary. Now, again, as I said, I don't know when this adoption is gonna happen, but I do think it's gonna happen in the next uh, 15, 20 years max. And uh, we're gonna start seeing the odd movie that isn't, you know, maybe even in HD, maybe there'll be a, uh, a revival of say 480p or VHS or DVD kind of quality and and for me in in my opinion I think that's a good thing I think that's a really good thing that we're going to start experimenting with the form in new and interesting ways and taking what were before limitations and turning them into artistic expression and I'm really excited to see what happens there um, I mean my film Johnny Moz's Lessons and Confidence I'm using aspect ratio in kind of a fun way I'm, I'm having some that are in 4.3, I'm having some that are in this like, in between 4.3 and 16 by nine. Got a couple scenes that might be in 1.1, one, one, stuff like that. And uh, you know, some of the film is filmed on these little digicams. So you kind of get this really low quality, grainy, late 90s, early 2000s kind of look to it. And all of this stuff I think helps feed into it. And that's, that's uh, the beauty of uh, making things, of making art, is that you can try weird little experiments and see what works, see what doesn't, and uh, just have a lot of fun with it. And that's what I think we uh, should be doing going forward. And I think that's gonna be the case uh, for definition in video. I think definition will become a tool for the creator rather than a, uh, you know, something on a brief where it's like, you need to make this in 4K. Cause I, I've had so many like clients in the past that, that talk about how they want 4K, but you kind of get the sense that they don't really understand why they want 4K. They just know they want 4K because they want to be able to say that their thing is in 4K, even if 4K doesn't benefit their, their content in the slightest. So, you know, you go and get a 4K camera just for that and then you film it in 4K to appease them. And uh, yeah, that's, I don't think that we're going to continue chasing the superior, most superior quality that we can get. And that's already happened because if we were going to continue this trend of just improving technologically, we would have adopted 4K en masse by now. And I know that 4K is out there. I know that lots of films are released in 4K. I know there's lots of YouTube videos that are in 4K. 
and I know 4K is commonplace, but I don't think it's been adopted in the same way that HD has, and I don't think it ever will. I think it will become another thing that we can use. If you want to make a film in 4K it, and it benefits from it being in 4K, then release it in 4K. But if it isn't benefited by the high fidelity video, then personally, I don't see the point in releasing it in 4K. And uh, maybe it'll be better in 720p. Maybe it'll be better in 144p. Go on your little settings wheel, right? And, and set this to 144p. You can't see shit. You can't see any of this, you can't see any of this. My face is like probably six pixels, but I don't think any of that really matters because it's about getting the idea, right? Because you can just sit back and watch it from further away. You don't have to get right up close and inspect everything. You know, the beauty in the world in, re in real life is the detail. And when you're trying to replicate real life, then the detail is the most important thing. But if you're trying to tell a story that's a piece of escapism, that's a piece of art, that's trying to tell something that isn't real, then I don't really see what the point of chasing that detail is. And I think it's a fruitless task that um, we're just going to carry on. We'll, we'll carry on doing it for, forever if, if that's what we're going to do. And eventually we'll just be chasing, you know, it's like how the PS5 wasn't really that much better than the PS4, which wasn't that much better than the PS3. But the PS3 was a fair bit better than the PS2, and the PS2 was a hell of a lot better than the PS1, and the PS1 was a hell of a lot better than the SNES, which was better than the NES. And it's gotten to the point where it's smaller and smaller in increments. I can already imagine what um, PS6 quality uh, video games are going to look like. I can't imagine... Uh, if we were in the year 2000, I couldn't imagine what PS3 graphics would look like. It would be like out of my, my uh, imagination. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, quite rambly video on uh, high definition, low definition, 4K, etc., etc. Uh, put your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, if you've wanted to be making something that isn't, you know, chasing the super high fidelity, then let me know. And if you've released something that's in like 8K, let me know as well. See what works for you, see what doesn't, and it's really important to do that. Uh, yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great rest of the day, and take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah.